Hi Sanjay, welcome to the podcast. Good evening, sir. So, a little bit of background for all the listeners uh, before we start with the podcast. So, Sanjay did his internship with me for about four months, during which he worked on a variety of different projects. So, there were certain internal projects that we worked on. We were creating some web apps on Excel that were also published on the store. Then we did some client engagements. There was one project with Sterlight Power, and there was another project with Economic Times. Very different projects, and um, so that is the background that I have working with Sanjay over a period of four months, during which we also had um, some great conversations. And since he was in the last leg of his MBA, uh, that is a very interesting phase of every MBA student's life. Um, it was also interesting for me because I got the chance to relive. that last phase of my mba right so that is the background that we have sanjay uh, welcome once again to start off i would like you to tell everyone a little bit about your current profile uh, hello everyone uh, i am sanjay currently i am working with hitachi abb power grids as senior data analyst so my profile mainly deals with the data visualization so we work mainly on power bi excel sql and these are the main tools and we deal with you know a lot of report making dashboards interacting with people uh, gathering the requirements etc and my day to day job is mainly on uh, you know making the right visualizations taking the right data from different sources and making sure that whatever data we are having we make sure that we have it intact properly done and also whatever visualizations we create it should be like uh, accessible to all the stakeholders because there lo- there is always you know security concerns and lot of things when it comes to technology so you need to make sure that the right data goes to the right person excellent so i would like to talk a little bit more about what your learnings have been in the last couple of months but let's circle back to the internship period right um as an mba student we all go through a lot of different phases and i think in, during that um 15 to 18 month period where we are in the institute um it's quite a level of maturity that we attain right we start off as freshers very overwhelmed with everything around us and then over a period of time we get more clarity in terms of how we decide what specialization we want what type of internship we want to do and eventually what type of job profile that we apply to so were you sure when you started your mba what is it that you want to do or did you end up in something very different to what you had planned earlier or were you open to all sorts of opportunities that you had when i started my mba i wanted to get into finance uh, so one of my strengths has been with respect to technology because i come from engineering background so obviously i wanted to do something with a combination of finance and technology so that has always been my case the right from day one i decided that i want to take finance because in our b school we have a choice to select our specialization after first year so i st- i had one uh, one year time to decide but still i decided to go for finance from day one and i made sure of course i was open to other things as well so i have taken finance and general management and with regard to analytics to be very honest i was introspecting myself during the lockdown during the pandemic time that's when i realized that why can't i do analytics and finance and learn all these uh, different tools and techniques so that's when i realized that okay this is what i need to do right i think uh, this is the story that a lot of us have i mean it's very easy for me to say that i have been interested in technology for a very long time but due to a variety of factors i ended up doing very different things you know i started with sales i worked in academics for a few years uh, then i worked in marketing research to this day i tell people i got into marketing research purely by accident i had no intention of ending up in marketing research it just so happened and i spent about 4 years there before i ended up full time in analytics so if i ask you that somebody who is at their absolute first stage of their mba journey right right now freshers are coming in batches have started i'm doing a lot of uh, mba first year sessions right so pre mba sessions what would be the one or two or three things that you would ask them to keep on their mind when it comes to choosing specialization because that seems to be one of the most common questions that i don't really know what i want to do so what would your suggestion be yes uh, when this question came to my mind i always i mean i asked myself that 
is it something i'll be interested in doing from morning to evening for the rest of my life because if you frame this question in that way you'll understand whether you are interested or not and the best way is to explore things and also follow the market because what happens is market keeps on changing tech, new things keep on emerging so earlier finance only meant finance like books of accounts and all these things now finance means you know cryptocurrencies you have a lot of new things so the good a good place to start is keep following the market and at the same time keep asking yourself this question am i really ready to do this kind of stuff from morning to evening for the rest of my life if the answer is yes because when you keep on exploring automatically you will understand and some fields it is very difficult to understand because it will take little bit of time to grow grow on you uh, for, for example when i started excel it was like very boring i think mean, i used to think who will sit in front of excel and do all of this stuff but after spending 5 6 hours i realized that okay this is something cool i can just spend literally so many hours sitting in front of excel and building lot of cool stuff so sometimes there you need to like explore make sure you spend you know like uh, 10 hours at least on each thing and then move on and until you find the right match you need to keep on just exploring right i think this um, life cycle of learning something new is uh, very similar to your experience the first few hours that you spend on it i think we love everything we learn because it's new yes. it's exciting and yes. usually in any workshop you know that we are attending or an online course that we are pursuing it's structured in a way that it is easing you into the topic and it's very nice but the moment it starts to become challenging that is where you wonder but is this really what we want to do i think that that is the important period where you have to persevere right you can't give up and like you said i completely agree with that point that you have to spend 10 hours 12 hours 20 hours on a topic before you make your mind whether that is really something you're interested in or not right okay um let's move on to something different so you and i worked on a few client projects Uh, which you uh, did with me so before doing these projects and i'm sure you did another summer internship as well uh, what was some misconceptions or preconceived notions that you had on your mind and after doing the internship with me you realized that oh you know what i felt very differently about the corporate and you know the way interactions happen and the way we build relationships and the way we present our work you know so just share some thoughts on you know what you felt before and how do you feel after all of these things happened yes so one one incident which i still remember is uh, for example when we are interacting with one of the clients i was there in the meeting so that client was able to i mean he is unable to articulate what he wanted then you showed some excel vba forms and you asked him is this want is this what you want and immediately they said yes this is what we wanted so that i think that is one of the things which i learned uh, like one of those initial things which i learned because at the end of the day whenever we are talking about clients we are talking about interacting with them sometimes clients themselves don't know what they want so we need to anticipate their needs and try to understand them uh, and that comes with experience of course and we should be able to connect to what they are saying and that is the most challenging part when it comes to understanding the customer and another thing which i which really like uh, it was enlightening for me was regarding the standards for example when you talk about finance there are always some standards but unfortunately when it comes to data there are no certain standards each company follow their own standards uh, when you look at balance sheet it doesn't matter which company it is they all they all have the same format they all have some standards to follow but when it comes to data it is unstructured unorganized and sometimes client will ask something but they don't have the data or sometimes they may ask something and they don't know like what set of data is required and i still remember one client was asking about kps uh, to make one report and when you asked about what kps you want they were unable to articulate it so sometimes what happens is whatever client says we should make sure that we should tell them in a layman language whether what they are saying can be achieved or not and that should be done in a very gentle way So, because clients don't want to hear no the minute they start hearing no they immediately want to say okay this is, i don't want to deal with this person so we should we should make them understand and we should make them realize okay this is why something is possible and why something is not possible correct and um, you know you mentioned this uh, particular episode and you would have seen it with a number of conversations that we had where you were p- a part of these client discussions where you know you have to be gentle you have to say yes to the client 
and at the same time you have to understand that your role as a consultant even a data analytics consultant is not just to make a nice dashboard right and yes. the truth is that if the client already knew how they want to present it what type of charts they want to use what sort of kpis they want then it's not exciting for us right i mean it's exciting because yes. there is um, a level of exploratory research in it right we have to present them different options right and we have to understand and read their mind in terms of what they want all right um the next thing i want to talk about is um, excel and power bi right so because a lot of students ask me this question in what order should we do it now see my experience has been very different because i had been working with excel ever since i was in school right and i was always ahead of the curve i was very passionate about it fell in love with it the first time i saw it and for me it came very naturally but for a lot of students their real experience with excel only comes in when they start their mba so just share some uh, actionable points in terms of what should be the learning path for excel what should be the learning path for power bi how much time should they dedicate on both these things yes uh, when it comes to learning technologies there is always this rush to learn everything at once and first of all that has to be like controlled because we have to go step by step now when it comes to excel and power bi i always recommend starting with excel because it is the most obvious thing like no matter in which organization you go or wherever you go excel is always there whether they use power bi or not and when it comes to excel also you need to first focus more on data than on the tool because we need to be data centric because there are many concepts which are common in excel and power bi as long as we understand the logic first it is always easy to implement the same logic in different tools in different ways so when it comes to like power bi versus excel i recommend to spend at least 6 months on excel like keep doing some projects keep working on financial models or analytics etc and then slowly move on to power bi because excel itself has power query it has dax it supports lot of functionality which power bi has so first explore the same concepts in excel and then slowly make a transition to power bi uh, so this is what i recommend all right now let us continue that point and talk about building your portfolio right mm-hmm. now you started doing that very early and in fact i would yes. like to share with everyone that um i have at any given moment at least 10 to 15 students from top b schools who are doing their live projects with me um and there have only been maybe three or four instances where i have reached out to a student and um, sanjay did not reach out to me i saw sanjay's posts right sanjay so i saw your posts on yes. linkedin and i was the one who reached out to you asking you uh that i really like the work that you have done and would you like to explore the possibility of working on a live project now this is just driving home the point which i tell to everyone that you can't really wait for organizations to come to you and offer you an opportunity on a platter right you have to build a portfolio whether that portfolio is in the form of a github repository whether it's in the form of a youtube video whether it's in the form of some dashboards or screenshots you're sharing um that it really depends on what is your core area of expertise and what is more comfortable to you but we have to get out of our comfort zone right so just share a little bit about um how did you build your portfolio uh, what were the early days like were you very successful in getting likes and comments from the very beginning or did it take some time and um, you know what are the common mistakes that you see students making which you know they should probably modify or you know they should focus on from a portfolio perspective yes so when it comes to portfolio one of the big misconceptions which i see is portfolio means it is something only related to technology and that is absolutely not true because you can build portfolio and present your finance projects marketing projects hr projects practically anything whatever work you do for example you see a lot of artists who have no technical background presenting their portfolio websites so i mean designers you can see a lot of people uh, who are from non technical background so the first thing is you should keep in mind that portfolio is just a way of presenting your work it has nothing to do with technical things and second thing is you can build portfolio on any platform github you and everything is drag and drop these days you don't even need to know how to code or you don't need to have technical background to build it and one of the mistakes what students do is uh, they will think that okay can we do this in 2 3 months no it is not possible you have because the biggest challenge when it comes to building portfolio is not going to be the projects themselves it is the ideas 
because for every product you need to come up with some idea and that idea should be sensible to recruiter as well uh, so for example i have seen many people who make the covid 19 dashboard so every time i see the same covid 19 dashboard being shared by everyone with the same data set so if you see my portfolio you will not find any covid 19 dashboard so i made sure that i have to differentiate myself as well because even recruiters also they'll see the same products over and over again and it gets boring kind of so when it comes to building portfolio your biggest challenge is going to be to generate ideas what ideas what projects you want to do and the second biggest challenge is going to be the tools which you are working on for example you may have a confusion between should i learn power bi or tableau or should i learn python or r so that is where the confusion comes my suggestion is stick with one tool like either pick power bi or tableau and stick with it and make sure that you are you become very good at it and keep sharing these uh, projects on linkedin also i mean you don't need to share files you can just share screenshots if you are okay and then you parallelly build your portfolio website that is what i used to do so i used to post on linkedin parallelly i used to update my portfolio website and it happens step by step doing everything at once it is it, it makes you very stressful you can't do that because b school is already like very hectic you will be come to you will be continuously bombarded with assignments quizzes exams and then once second year starts you will be busy with placements placement activities then you have societies so many things so you should you should make sure that you give yourself enough time and keep working during the weekends and you can even take the help of faculty mentors for project ideas because sometimes you may get very good project ideas from the people whom you know so that is what i suggest all right um i would like to segue into something related to building a portfolio which is this very uh, silly question that but where do we find the data right and i always tell students especially that even when i'm giving my client pitches i'm not really using other clients data right one is because right. i can't and b yes. why would that even be relevant to a client it is always freely readily available data sets on kaggle right but again and again students say but why can't we work on real client data one is that you will never get that opportunity right because why would um, an organization with whom you are doing your life project or internship give you access to that data right the, the second more important reason is that how does it even matter real data that you are working with on client projects is no different from what you find online the only difference that i feel is the fact that what you find on kaggle for example is more structured and it's cleaner and uh, the real data as you and i have seen on different projects requires a lot of data preparation on it right but that is more to do with the excel side when you are working on power bi and tableau they're more or less the same right okay yes so the next thing i want to talk about is competition so we have spoken about portfolio and um, i will first share my take i did my mba in 2009 right and that was a time where competitions were there but they weren't too many of them right this is all pre day to compete and this is only 4 years after youtube was launched right so this is a different day and age that i am talking about now of course it's everywhere right and i always tell students that i judge so many different competitions it is really not about winning and i'm not saying this in a very uh, you know a very soft tone that you know i am an educator and i'm trying to make everybody feel nice but i genuinely mean that i have seen students who win competitions every time right i will not take any names here but there are certain institutes from where students win the competition every time and i get very bored because they are doing the same thing over and over again and that's not a good thing because they are not reinventing they don't have that fire they are not pushing themselves on the other hand i am more impressed by somebody who probably comes from a non technical background who's learning very rapidly and is putting a lot of things on the table some of them they get right some of them they get wrong and trust me over a period of time sanjeev this is again something we have discussed over a period of time when you look at a 5 year 7 year duration people accelerate at different levels you know maybe the starting point is different coming from a top tier b school coming from a mid tier or coming from a different tier for example i am from a mid tier b school and while it took me a few years to catch up you know with um, the top league out there invariably i got there right it definitely is um going to hold you back for a few years because you start a few steps back but then you always have so many opportunities 
that come up right so what is your take on competition because i believe you have uh, appeared for a lot of them so what has been your journey like what what did you learn um and what would you like to share as some points with all the listeners yes uh, so generally we are we have some passion and obsessions about certain topics uh, for example in my case what i used to do is i used to participate in different competitions you know a uh, stock portfolio competition or you can say debate competition or quizzing so these are not related to technical things so the idea of participating in this competitions is first is for example if you take quizzing so whenever i go to quiz competition i'll become more humble because every time i go there and couldn't answer some questions i realize okay there is lot of things to learn so there is also some attitude building and apart from that when once i went for a debate competition some finance topic was given i could not even articulate for 2 minutes so then i realized that okay co- even communication skills matter so tomorrow when we go for an interview or we or we present our work to someone it is very important that we need to articulate things very well uh, just doing the project is one side of the story and then you need to know how to talk to people how to organize things how to coordinate with lot with a team or something like because these skills really matter in organizations maybe not at college level so if you participate in different competitions you will have a balanced profile and of course if you feel that okay you love some technical competitions that is also great but at the end of the day make sure that you are not focused only on one side of things for example you may be technically brilliant but if you don't know how to talk to people if you don't know how to uh, like network with people that that will put you on a back foot so that is my take on competitions right also share some tips on how to build your resume yes when it comes to resume of course when it comes to campus placements every university or institution have their own standard which every student has to follow whether they like it or not when it comes to off campus always make sure that you follow ats standard resume it is very very important to follow such standard because uh, today artificial intelligence plays a major role in scanning your resume and most of the resumes do not even reach the recruiter so make sure that you tailor your resume according to the job descriptions which are there in different websites lot of times what happens is students make a resume and use the same resume to apply for different profiles and that and that should not be done so i'll give you my own experience i have applied for a job which is related to finance one mistake what i have done is i have sent a resume which i made for analytics so i had two resumes the next day it got rejected i submitted and next day immediately hr rejected saying that okay this profile doesn't suit us so it's very important that i mean it, it is going to make it very risky because if you make a resume which is like all in one you will become like an average guy among all the applicants if you make something tailored to the job then you will be at the top but if you send a wrong resume you will be at the bottom so you should make sure that whatever you are writing in your resume make sure you are thorough with everything and also make sure it is relevant to the job sometimes you may put something irrelevant to the job and tomorrow in the interview exactly they'll pinpoint that and you will be cornered so you should make sure that whatever you write you are thorough with it right next i want to talk about a very singular point so you cleared your power bi da100 certification recently yes now my experience was very different because i cleared my da100 last year but i had already been working on power query and power pivot so on m and dax on excel way before that right so for me the knowledge of power bi came very organically which started from excel and then i started learning power bi for you i'm sure the journey would have been quite different so just share with us uh, what your learning path was right and uh, if somebody is uh, planning to clear their da100 certification what are the things that they should keep in mind okay uh, so i want to make one honest admission da100 is mostly theoretical rather than practical like you can write da100 but still you may not clear any interviews so make sure to keep that in mind and when it comes to certifications definitely they are going to add value you will be i mean if someone doesn't have a certificate and if you have some microsoft certification you will be valued definitely but at the same time make sure that you work on internships and all these things and what i said, so in my case as well i wrote da100 after i got my job not before getting the job and the reason is very simple uh, for example whenever you go for any interview or whenever you are trying to find an internship people want to see your dashboard not your certificate if your dashboard is good and if you are able to explain it very well people are ready to give you opportunities 
and that is that is where portfolio comes into picture and when when you are writing da 100 also make sure you spend 6 months to 1 year building on different dashboards working on different projects internships all these things and then if you write the exam it will add lot of value to your profile as well because you will be able to relate theory with practical knowledge otherwise you will just cram something for the exam go there write the exam pass the exam and then you will not understand anything so that is what i feel about da 100 and make sure that whatever i mean one of the advantages of da 100 is it covers everything related to power bi so once you start your journey you will exactly understand which areas you have neglected which areas you have learned for example i have seen some people who learn power bi but they don't focus on power bi service some people they know power bi service and everything but they don't know power query so exam covers each and every topic like uniformly so exam will be your best benchmark when it comes to topics yes so okay. that's my take on it excellent let me circle back to your current role as a bi analyst so without getting into organization details that you would not like to share just from a very high level um what are some interesting things that you observed when you started working you know in the way bi is being used in the way communication happens with teams in the way certain dashboards are more important you know in the way visualizations are used right so yes. what are your thoughts on that yes uh, when it comes to any organization there there will always be some existing systems which are in place and so the biggest challenge is in any organization there will be a very big bureaucracy it doesn't matter which organization once you work in any big organization going through that bureaucracy itself will be the biggest challenge and when i started working i mean whether it could be live products or my current job as well so the biggest challenge will be to make to make the current for example when you talk to management they always want everything in powerpoint or excel now you need to convince them that no 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 this is this this look this is actually better on power way you can interact with it there is always some resistance when it comes to you know higher management mid level management and lower management so the biggest challenge is to convince the management that power bi is better than excel or power bi is better than the existing tools which are there and the second biggest uh, thing which i noticed was when it comes to data it is not available in a structured format for example sometimes i get data where some things are missing and it often happens it happens more than what we imagine because what happens is the people who extract the data and people who visualize the data could be different so sometimes sometimes the guy who visualizes the data will say okay i need this data but later he realizes that okay this data is not sufficient to visualize everything so always there are some missing gaps there so we need to be like very i mean we also need to have domain knowledge for example many people think analytics is all about okay uh, building a pie chart or building a bar graph or something like that but if you want to build let's say a finance dashboard or supply chain dashboard or hr dashboard you need to know how these kpis work for example if i talk about net profit and gross profit you should know what is the difference between net profit and gross profit so that kind of domain knowledge you need to do again lot of learning regarding that until and unless you understand the data then you understand the domain knowledge you can't implement it in technology so power bi is not just about uh, learning dax or learning formulas you should also know the concepts then only you will be able to build the right dashboards otherwise what happens is you know how to use dax you know how to build visuals you know do how, you know how to do data modeling but ultimately you may not be able to build the right metrics so that is these are the few things which i learned that is very helpful sanjay uh thank you for a terrific conversation i hope they were very interesting takeaways for all the students especially both in first year and in final year because sometimes even in final year you're not quite sure whether you want to end up in data analytics or not and it is perfectly okay to say no to something right a lot of students i feel yes. um feel that we can't say no right people will judge us when we say that data is not an area we are interested in now see data is like communication so we all need to have a certain degree of understanding and comfort with it right it is non optional to an extent power bi is becoming like excel in the sense that it is almost mandatory for you to have some level of power bi knowledge right i train psos and companies of all shapes and sizes and power bi i think is being adopted everywhere right so you have to learn it uh when you learning excel at the same time right but at the same time do you really want to pursue a career in data 
you know, I'll go back to what you had said earlier. If it doesn't excite you, if you don't see yourself working on it for eight hours and liking that work, you should really consider whether data and a hardcore data profile is the right profile for you, right? Because working in data does not mean that it's exciting all the time. You mentioned that sometimes it's boring when you're learning something new for the first time. Let me tell you, after working on Excel for 15 plus years, after writing books on it, and I'm somebody who dreams of Excel, right? I sometimes do trainings in my dreams as well. That is how much I absolutely love Excel. But there are days, there are certain projects which are not exciting. The nature of the work itself is not exciting. But it doesn't matter, right? Because at the end of the day, there are those few moments that come where the client has given you a problem and you're solving it. You're improving efficiency in the organization you are reducing the turnaround time or you're reducing the errors. And that is what drives me, right? And as a data professional, it's not always about making charts and you know visualizations and transitions and all of that. A lot of time will be spent on pure data cleaning. You will have to sometimes spend five hours writing a single formula and it still refuses to work, right? There will be bugs that will come all the time and you have to learn to like the process of debugging something that used to be in the domain of programming earlier now is also applicable to people working on Excel and Power BI. You know, that is a very important point that I feel for everyone. People feel Excel and Power BI is mostly data prepping and data visualization, but that's not true at all, right? Because Excel has Visual Basic in it. Excel is now shifting to JavaScript. We have web apps, we have the script editor. And when you're working on Power BI, we have M which requires a mentality like SQL, where you have to think as a process and as a flow. And when you're working on DAX, even though it's not a programming language, the logic has to be super clear. It's not like Excel yes. that we can just try out five combinations and something works, right? Yes. So I think we all need to have that um, bent of mind tailored towards programming because in the future, everything is going to get automated. And more and more of AI and ML features will be integrated very deeply with Excel and Power BI. We've already started to see that happen. And I think that's a very important takeaway that I would like to give to everyone. Please focus on your coding skills, right? And Sanjay, this is my last question for you. Yes. I know on a personal level that you have started your journey with Python very recently. Um, yes. So what has your experience been like? How many days have you spent working on it? And what is your plan of action going forward? Yes, uh, I would like to make one confession regarding this. Initially, I looked at Python just like how I looked at Excel or Power BI. But what I realized is Python is like a vast ocean, just like any other technology. And it is even bigger vast ocean compared to any other tool. And what I realized is I don't need to learn everything. I only need to learn the relevant libraries. So that is something which I, that is one of the mistakes I made and I realized it. I'm working on it. So when it comes to like different profiles and different domains, you exactly need to know what you need to learn. Uh, it can't be like everyone becomes a hardcore programmer. For example, if you are a data analyst, you need to learn NumPy and Pandas. And make sure that you work on those libraries, read the documentation and make sure that you're working on some relevant projects related to it. So as of now, when it comes to my Python journey, right now I'm focusing on Pandas and NumPy and I'm trying to get hang of it, like different documentations I'm reading. And I also want to build custom visuals in Power BI using Python. Because com we generally look at tools like individually, but when you combine some of these tools, they are going to create magic. Uh, I have seen some custom visuals and I was blown away by it because if you, I mean, generally when it comes to Power BI, there are some visuals, you also have custom visuals, but still there is some limitation. So knowing how to code will allow you to overcome those limitations. So this has been my experience. That is an excellent point, Sanjay. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope all the listeners have had important takeaways coming from this. Yes, thank you.